hello students today we will be dealing with the next part of sex hormones that is the anti androgens in the last class i dealt with androgen and anabolic steroids so what is androgens androgens are nothing but testosterone and the other metabolites which have the uh, masculinizing effect with a uh, anabolic function okay now these are called as uh, uh, collectively called as androgens uh, their action was equal to testosterones here we will be discussing anti androgens that has opposite action or inhibiting the actions of testosterone what are the anti androgens those includes uh, danazol uh, cyproterone acetate flutamide finasteride okay uh, danazol cyproterone acetate flutamide and finasteride first drug danazol danazol is an ethysterone derivative which is effective orally now it is an and it has a an weak androgenic anabolic progesterone with some glucocorticoid action now if you see or if you check where this drug in the textbook comes it comes under the progesterone or female sex hormones this part is given in under the female sex hormones now it is also named as or labeled as impented or attenuated androgens because it can induce some androgen specific mrna production some androgenic effect is also shown that is why it is always it is also named as impented or attenuated androgens <coughs> now what is the mechanism of action of danazol or how does this act by suppressing the gonadotropin hormones that is fsh and lh which are secreted from the pituitary now what will happen if fsh and lh are decreased um, the hormones gets decreased and there is no testicular or ovarian function directly so all these uh, organs atrophies and no functions takes place this is the main function otherwise it will go directly inhibit the steroidic enzymes from the steroids or from cholesterol steroid here our uh, synthesis takes place that is also being inhibited by danazol which will result in all these will result in endometrial atrophy and amenorrhea in uterus okay half life is about 12 to 18 hours preparation doses this is not needed much for you but no danazol danazol is another uh, anti androgen okay anti androgen the uses of anti androgen Uh, danazol that is first uses endometriosis it helps in the improvement it helps in improvement uh, in 75% of the case by inhibiting ovarian function relief of dysmenorrhea uh, pain dis uh, peronia and excessive bleeding also decreases slowly so it is used in um, condition known as endometriosis for a course of 3 to 6 months it is also used for menorrhagia fibrocystic breast disease hereditary angioneurotic edema gynecomastia as well as in infertility danazol uh, in menorrhagia danazol reduces the menstrual blood loss mm. it is the second line of drug to oral progesterone fibrocystic disease is nothing a uh, chronic cystic uh, mastitis for which we prescribe uh, danazol for 3 to 6 months okay these are the uses of danazol <coughs> now coming to the side effects of danazol danazol are dose related first amenorrhea at a very higher dose it can lead to amenorrhea second androgenic effect in some cases leading to decreased uh, breast size hirsutism and weight gain uh, plus hot flushes night sweating and cramps uh, also loss of libido in men loss of libido in men since it is has a progesteronic activity all these hot flushes night sweating and cramps comes a uh, are shown okay coming to the next drug cyproterone acetate now this is a uh, um, relatively weak um, androgen antagonist but chemically it is similar to progesterone here also it is similar uh, chemically similar to progesterone so it has a direct anti androgenic action progesterone like activity that is inhibiting the luteinizing hormone causing anti androgen action inhibiting luteinizing hormone no lh is being formed respective sex or, uh, organs no action takes place and anti androgenic action uh, it competes with dihydrotestosterone for intracellular receptors so dihydrotestosterone and another androgen where they both compete and this cyproterone acetate uh, goes forward go bind to the sites where dihydrotestosterone binds now the use of cyber uh, uh, cyproterone acetate first on precocious puberty in boys precocious puberty 
in boys in an inappropriate sexual behavior in men and virilization in females or women these are the uses for uh, cypro uh, cyproterone acetate that is anti androgenic effects where all we require in precocious puberty means early occurrence of puberty in boys to prevent that those which show uh, inappropriate sexual behaviors especially in men and those who has virilization in women okay the very limited use only and very rarely it is being used the next drug flutamide flutamide is nothing but a non steroidal still now we talked about steroidal drugs now this is a non steroidal no hormonal activity but it has a specific androgenic action it has a specific androgenic action now what is the mechanism of action of flutamide flutamide when mm, inside when taken in the body it get converted to an active metabolite named as 2 hydroxy flutamide now this will go and block competitively block the androgenic action by acting on the accessory sex hormones accessory sex organs and the pituitary thereby what happens there is and uh, they block the action there will be increased ls secretion <coughs> um, increase ls secretion by blocking feedback mechanism also here plasma testosterone may, uh, level may also increase to overcome the and uh, direct and the androgenic effects so this limits the use uh, when given singly so it is usually combined with uh, gnrh agonist also to uh, for treatment of uh, what you say cancer and etc and this combination theory is known as combined androgen blockade here only half the block takes place with flutamide so to pre complete androgen block we uh, combine it with gnrh agonist and this therapy is known as combined androgen blockade so i tell you once again flutamide flutamide is another anti androgen where testosterone activity is they try to inhibit the testosterone activity here what they do is this flutamide here gets converted to an active metabolite and this active metabolites go and bind to the accessory sex hormones and pituitary blocking the androgen effects uh, uses it can be used for treatment of prostate cancer along with gna gnrh agonist and also it is used in hirsutism female hirsutism adverse drug reactions it includes gynecomastia and breast tenderness with sa with with few cases with liver damage so the dose is 250 mg 3 times a day now coming to another drug finasteride finasteride okay now as i told you in my previous chapter testosterone is converted to more active testosterone with the uh, dihydrotestosterone which is a more active form of testosterone with the help of 5 alpha reductase this and uh, this drug finasteride this will um, block the uh, enzyme 5 alpha reductase especially the uh, type 2 isozyme okay so finasteride is a competitive inhibitor of enzyme 5 alpha reductase which converts testosterone in, into more active uh, dihydrotestosterone which is responsible for the androgen androgenic activity in many of the tissues including prostate and the hair follicles okay uh, so it acts as an anti androgenic drug now what are the uses uses i told you it is uh, uh, present in the prostate as well as hair follicle so prostate means benign prostatic hypertrophy it helps to decrease the prostate volume improve urinary flow and reversion of the disease progression now if you withdraw withdraw of the withdrawal of this drug may lead to uh, regrowth after prolonged therapy second use male pattern baldness male pattern baldness <coughs> now coming to the Mm, pharmacokinetics it is effective orally metabolized in the liver with a t half of 4 to 6 hours now side effects loss of libido impotence and decreased ejaculation doses if you see in bph it is 5 mg od and in baldness it is 1 mg od these are the important uh, anti androgens that you should know first one danosol second one cyproterone acetate third one flutamide and fourth one finasteride i hope you got with the anti androgen in your exam what is being asked is maybe two examples of anti androgen sometimes what is finasteride and what is flutamide uh, then we say, then they ask a question why finasteride is combined with alpha 1 blockers to uh, treat benign prostatic hypertrophy why they both are combined now i told you here it decreases the prostatic volume what does uh, alpha 1 do alpha 1 will overcome the dynamic component that is that is what does it do 
okay this is a okay i'll give you uh, this as a homework please find out why finasteride is combined with alpha 1 blocker okay uh, to reduce uh, bph why they are combined i need the answer please do comment in the answer box so that you can at least you read something in the textbook and find out okay a small note on erectile dysfunction of uh, erectile dysfunction drugs okay pde pde no is nothing but phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors which includes sildenafil there is an l over there which i missed sildenafil tadalafil uh, which acts on the nitric oxide pathway so the two uh, the most important group of drug that is very important is pde5 inhibitors sildenafil okay okay before going into the drugs let us see what by definition what is erectile dysfunction erectile dysfunction refers to the inability of men to attain and maintain an erect penis with sufficient rigidity to allow sexual intercourse now what is the pharmacological basis of or mechanism of action or what happens during sexual arousal when there is a sexual arousal there is increase increased blood flow to the penis that causes relaxation of the cavernous sinusoid so that there is filling up of blood uh, within the uh, penis making it rigid elongated and erect okay and this uh, cause the, this mm, this is done with the help of nitric oxide which causes smooth muscle relaxation uh, of the corpus cavernosum and the blood vessels now nitric oxide is being released from the parasympathetic non adrenergic non cholinergic nerve endings and uh, as well as the vascular endothelium vascular endothelium vascular endothelium so once nitric oxide is being released there is guanyl cyclase which converts uh, gtp to cyclic gnp now at this stage it gets converted to uh, proteins get converted and causes there is vascular relaxation of vascular smooth muscles and this is finally that leads to erection but in many of the people who has passed middle age or in the elderly this cyclic gmp is mainly utilized or uh, degraded fast into 5 dash gmp with the enzyme by the enzyme uh, phosphodiesterase 5 so our aim is to inhibit this enzyme and maintain the activity of nitric oxide so as to maintain our erect uh, under rigid penis i hope you understood with it <coughs> once again uh, nitric oxide nitric oxide releases helps in the conversion of gtp to gmp gmp is easily degraded into 5 dash gmp with the help of enzyme 5 uh, phosphodiesterase 5 enzyme phosphodiesterase phosphodiesterase enzyme uh, I isoenzyme that is 5 now here uh, <coughs> gmp is required for the formation of uh, erectile penis by smooth muscle relaxation and vaso uh, vasodilatation <coughs> our aim is to inhibit this degradation enzyme that is PDE5 uh, coming to the first drug that is sildenafil okay here also I missed an L it is sildenafil sildenafil uh, <coughs> the mechanism of action of sildenafil I told you be inhibiting the enzyme phosphodiesterase 5 and 5 in the corpus cavernosa of the penis thereby maintaining uh, smooth muscle relaxation it is absorbed orally with a half life of 4 hours um, given 50 milligram 1 hour before sexual activity it will potentiate the nitrate hypotension activity i hope you understood with it now it is also a, um, this drug is also a uh, this is metabolized by cytochrome p 3A4. So, any inhibitor for this drug will increase the level of sildenafil in the blood, especially ketoconazole, erythromycin, verapamil will increase its level. Now, renal and hepatic disease also will increase its level. Side effects include since it, uh, it causes vasodilatation, there is headache, flushing, dyspepsia, myalgia, and loose stools. Also, another peculiar side effect is uh, PDE6. Uh, it has inhibition of PDE6 also weakly inhibits isoenzyme PDE6 which is present in the retina it can cause color vision impairment mm, uh, which uh, uh, which uh, no color vision impairment a condition named as NAION that is non arthritic ischemic optic neuropathy also there is fall in BP and precipitation of MI other uses includes pulmonary hypertension So if you summarize, you should know what is testosterone, anabolic steroids and its uses, antiandrogens plus PDE5 inhibitors with their mechanism of action and side effects. I hope this class was useful for you, a very small class. I hope this was useful for you and you understood something from this.
topic if you have any doubt please doubts please to ask me and also answer me the question in the comment box why finasteride is combined with alpha blockers um, for treatment of benign hypertrop hypertrophic uh, ben uh, benign hypertrophy of prostate okay thank you i hope this was audible uh, you could understand uh, you wouldn't find any difficulty in understanding if you do find some difficulty do message me or do comment me in the comment box i am here to help you okay thank you please write your um, please write your name in the comment box to mark the attendance two more things you, sh you should answer that is what are the other groups of drug that are used for the treatment of erectile dysfunction apart from pde5 inhibitors and some other drugs apart from what i taught you today what are the other drugs that have anti androgenic property